For those of you who have already installed MPLAB X and looked around, you no doubt have noticed a few differences from MPLAB 8. Many of those differences are just cosmetic. Some are simply the relocation of menu commands and configuration settings. However, there are a few features that are very different from what you are used to. Let's take a look at some of the more significant changes to MPLAB. The first and probably most crucial difference is that MPLAB X uses a new set of USB drivers for tools such as the RealIce and ICD3. There is a tool installed with MPLAB X called the Driver Switcher that makes the job of selecting the new open source drivers very easy. The process is discussed in detail in a separate episode of MPLAB X TV. Another difference is that MPLAB X is a pure project based environment. This means that any activity you wish to perform requires a project. As a consequence, the process for importing a hex or elf file has changed. When you select from the file menu, file, import, hex elf, the IDE will launch a wizard that will prompt you for all the information required to create a project wrapper around the hex or elf file. Although it is a new process, it is asking for essentially the same information that was required in MPLAB 8, but you don't need to remember to configure all those things manually. Perhaps the most visibly different aspect of MPLAB X is its project file structure. Unlike MPLAB 8, which kept all project-related information in two files, the MCP project and MCW workspace files, MPLAB X takes a radically different approach. There's no longer any one file that you can double-click on from your file manager because MPLAB X stores project information in a series of XML formatted text files. These files are stored within a very specific subfolder structure within your project folder. When you first create a project, you will see a subfolder called NB Project that contains another folder called Private. These two folders contain all of your project information and should never be removed or manually altered. One of the most beneficial changes you will find in MPLAB X is that hardware programmers and debuggers, along with assemblers and compilers, are now selected on a per-project basis. In MPLAB 8, when you selected a tool, it applied to every open project. In MPLAB X, every project has its own tool assignments. You can even use different compiler versions with different projects at the same time. Because of this, we now have the capability to do simultaneous debugging of multiple projects. The one change that will take the most effort to get used to is the way you build your projects. No longer do you have to explicitly select debug or release from the toolbar. Now, the type of build is implicit in the activity you are performing. The build and clean and build buttons are exactly the same as the make and build all buttons in MPLAB 8, except that they always build in release mode. So you won't be using them quite as much in MPLAB X. Instead, there are two new buttons that you will likely use more often, the make and program device button and the debug project button. Both of these buttons will make your project, but the program device button will build in release mode, while the debug project button will build in debug mode. Both buttons will then program the target and in the case of the debug project button, it will optionally start the target running immediately. Related to this is the concept of a debug session. Once you have pushed the debug project button, you will be in an active debug session. During this time, all debugging features are available to you, but you may not change any of the project settings or reprogram the target if you rebuild the project. To do either of these things, you must first press the end debug session button. While there are many more minor changes, we've just covered all of the really big ones. Once you become comfortable with them, the rest should fall into place with little effort. For MPLAB XTV, I'm Rob Ostaki.